questions. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our Know Before You Go presentation from IAMCP. A few logistics before we get started. Um, during the presentations, we do ask that you, if you do have any questions, you put them in the Q&A panel. At the end of the presentation today, we will be opening it up for Q&A. At that point, you'll be able to actually add some additional questions as well. So with that, I am going to turn things over to Cheryl Salazar, who is our MIST and Inspire Chair. So with that, over to you. Great, thanks Sandy, and welcome to everybody um, who have taken the time out today to learn how they can maximize um, next week because um, of the new, uh, unique situation we find ourselves in. Um, as you can imagine, things are much different uh, this year. And so this um, presentation is ready to guide you through what Inspire will look like um, next week. And we have also invited um, the other communities that we work with extensively. Um, we have a, a member from the WIT Network and Women in Cloud and a Microsoft representative with us today as well. So what can you expect from IAMCP specifically um, next week? So on Monday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time, we will have a Welcome to Inspire kickoff with our international president, Sergio Baptista, who is in Portugal. Um, I will be on that call with Sergio. Um, it will be 30 minutes long and he has some opening remarks and we'd like to share those with you. Um, on Tuesday morning, uh, at least Tuesday morning Pacific time, for some of you, it might be Tuesday evening, especially if you are in India or Australia. Um, it's really when Inspire kicks off with the Microsoft Welcome with Judson, uh, Nick Parker and Gabriella Schuster. Um, so make sure you sign up for the Microsoft Welcome. And then what you can expect during uh, Inspire is 48 hours of continual programming. So for most of us, that means some of our sessions that we will be uh, viewing during our days will be recorded and other sessions will be live. So I just want to set that expectation with you. And then next week on Friday, once again at 7 a.m. in the morning Pacific time, so this might be Friday evening for some for some of you, we will have our Inspire wrap up session with Sergio and our regional IAMC presidents, and they will be spending time on that call discussing the top takeaways for their regions um, and how they uh, will take that forward through the next uh, uh, Microsoft financial year. Um, we have a saying at IAMCP that says, the things that start at Inspire are carried on at IAMCP through the year. And so that's our intent is to really take those two to three takeaways and embed them into our businesses going forward. So something else I'd like to call your attention to is on Tuesday, Gabriella will do a very specific shout out for IAMCP. And for those of you who are not members and would like to become a member of IAMCP, I've included our URL in the bottom right hand corner. And so feel free at any time to go and explore more about what we can offer you. Now for the next couple of uh, minutes or probably 10, 15 minutes, I'm going to hand over to various members of IAMCP, Microsoft, the WIT Network and Women in Cloud and they're going to outline what their sessions are about. And once they've concluded that portion of the presentation, then I'm going to do a walkthrough of the Inspire website, explaining in a little bit more detail what the various different uh, sections are all about and how you can participate in them. So Klaus, I'm going to hand over to you. If you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, um, telling people a little bit about um, where, what you do for AMCP and where you're from, and then um, if you can hand over to the next person after that, please. Great. Uh, thank you, General, um, for inviting me to be here. I'm Klaus, from CEO of Hackathon and uh, from Germany. I'm the treasurer of IMCP National and also a mayor. And I will be happy to present uh, at Inspire uh, a session 
Well, you see the title here, uh, and it's mostly about uh, to show you what our peers in Spain and Germany have done a fantastic world uh, work um, in Todos Desde Casa and Teams for Schools. So to inspire you how you could copy that content to your uh, chapter, to your environment, to your business. So we'll be happy to join a couple of you uh, on Wednesday, you see uh, at 6 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. It will be repeated as all sessions, of course. With that, uh, I will hand over to Sandy. All right, um, I can't go on uh, cameras. Apologies for that. Um, However, I'm um, very excited to be actually presenting um, on Teams and how IMCP has implemented Teams um, within the organization. I've got some great co-presenters with me, um, Eddie Bader, as well as Manish Bansal and David Swenson. We'll be not only going through um, how we've deployed Teams within our organization, but also how we've utilized Power Automate to automate the uh, event um, invitation process, as well as as some Power BI that we've been doing on our membership uh, analysis. So looking forward to presenting with those guys and also looking forward to uh, having all of you attend that session. So please um, look, mark it on your calendars and please uh, join us for that session. And who's up next? Ryan, and I don't think Ryan's joined us, Cheryl, so I might have need to have you talk to his slides. Uh, and no problem. So. Uh, Ryan uh, Risley is our uh, IAMCP Advocacy Chair. I hope I got his title correct, and, and if I didn't, I apologize. So um, Ryan is really going to be um, talking about how you can take advantage or utilize advocacy um, to do the most good within your community. So uh, utilizing some best practices um, for your geography and and uh, making a difference. And he will be joined um, in his VFI sessions with, I believe, David Pryor and uh, Frank Valdivicio. And you can join that session. The first session is on Tuesday. Uh, one thing I, I neglected to mention for everybody on the call, all the sessions you see here Will be 30 minutes long. They will be the first session will be live and then the recordings will be available twice more after the session. So if you miss that, then uh, you can watch it live, uh, watch it recorded afterwards. Um, and then we will also have Krista Thielen and Phil Gwalke who will be talking about cross generational leadership. So these are two experts in that field. And if you're looking to foster a, a cross-generational approach within your business, um, I highly recommend that you attend that session if you are able to. Um, and with that being said, um, Frank, I'm going to hand over to you. So if you want to take um, over from me, that'd be great. All right. Thank you, Cheryl. I uh, appreciate that introduction. Uh, hello again, my name is Frank Valdivieso and I am the Diversity and Inclusion Chair for the Americas. I'm also uh, President and CEO of Griffin Consulting. Um, and over the last 16 months, I've had the pleasure of serving uh, on the International DNI Committee under the leadership of Sarika Mahorda and as the DNI Chair for the Americas. And one of the things that uh, I've been able to experience time and time again is that when you are able to be at the table, be heard and seen, and allowed to be your full self, great things can happen. And uh, when we started on this mission about 16 months ago, we made a conscious decision as part of the committee to focus on inclusion uh, because we knew that focusing on diversity was gonna be hard because that discussion really focus requires us to focus on what divides us. But with these two sessions, I'm very excited about both of them because they both really deal with inclusion. Um, um, the first session on Wednesday morning is how to build and lead a successful business when you represent a minority group. And uh, one of my beliefs is that if you want to be successful, you should do what successful people do. And we've got a tremendous panel of minority owned businesses who are going to share their challenges, their successes and lessons learned. And for those of you that are on this session today who are owners uh, of minority owned businesses, um, I implore you to, to attend the session. You're going to get lots of great information from this, this panel. 
Um, the second session, uh, digital skilling during high unemployment scenarios. Uh, this is such a timely topic. As you all know, uh, this pandemic that we're in is, is causing havoc to millions and millions of individuals all throughout the world. Um, but I think we have an opportunity here and um, to really reach out to these individuals and help them transition into jobs in tech. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the phenomenal program uh, that Microsoft announced uh, tied to LinkedIn Learning, where they've committed to train 25 million people. We're also going to be talking about some alternative programs uh, where we can reach out to those uh, to those pool of talent that traditionally we have overlooked in the IT field. And as you know, there are a number of individuals that have the aptitude and the right attitude to be successful in this field. So I implore you guys to join these sessions and I look forward to seeing you uh, during the week. Thank you. And over to Sarika. Sarika, you're muted. Hi, very sorry about that. Hi everyone, I'm Sarika Malhotra. I'm based out of India. I serve as the secretary on the International IMCP board and I also serve as the international chair for DNI. And I'm really excited to be sharing the sessions that we've planned for you. Frank already spoke about a couple uh, which are related to inclusion and I want to introduce the remaining ones. Uh, so we've got uh, three sessions lined up that I'm talking about. So the first one is that how do you ensure that you are in a position of a preferred supplier when you're trying to win business, when you're trying to pitch uh, to customers? Because uh, diversity has become a very important parameter that organizations now look at when they are trying to hire suppliers. So what do you do within your organization to ensure that you are in an advantageous position or you're a preferred supplier? So we're going to be covering that in this session. We've got an amazing panel uh, from Microsoft as well as business leaders from companies and DNI experts. Please do join and take full advantage of this session. This session is on uh, the Wednesday at 5.15 a.m. Pacific time, but it will be repeated. So please don't worry that it's too early for you. It'll be replayed twice as Shell had mentioned. The second session that we have lined up for you is about why should you as a business take inclusion seriously? So many times I think a lot of people ask this question that, you know, why should I really focus on DNI? I am too busy running my business. So it has been proven and we are going to bring many examples to you uh, in this session, which is also a panel as to why uh, diversity is a key aspect and can make all the difference between success and failure when you're uh, you know, delivering solutions or services to your customers. And if you've not factored the impact, it can have, uh, you know, uh, serious consequences, not serious, but maybe adverse consequences for your business. So please do uh, join us for this session. And this session is on July 22nd at 4.30 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, too early for the, uh, for the people on Pacific time, but uh, it will be repeated, so it's fine. Uh, the third session that we have is a very interesting one. For those of you who are members of IMCP, you would know that we ran a competition for a DNI infographic or a poster that we'd released in November last year. And we had invited entries from members as well as other partners for you know how they made use of this poster to create awareness within their organization to promote diversity. And we received some really interesting entries and it was tough selecting the winners, but we had to. So we have the three winners of our uh, competition here uh, talking to our, two of our committee members, Namrata and Frank, and they're going to share real life uh, experiences and real life stories on how they built inclusive cultures within their organizations, which uh, helped them grow their business. This promises to be a very interesting session, too, so please do join. And this is on Wednesday, July 22nd at 6.45 a.m. Uh, lastly, for those of you who are uh, not following the DNI activities that we are doing, I encourage you uh, to attend all of these sessions and learn more about uh, the, the, the value proposition that we are bringing to you, the resources we are bringing to you, the trainings that we are rolling out. 
as well as the success stories that we are sharing with you so that you can take full advantage of uh, what IMCP is doing in this area. Thank you and see you all next week. Thanks, Sarita. So, Eddie, I hand the floor over to you. Thanks, Cheryl. Uh, Sarika, I don't think 4.30 a.m. is too early. We have toothpicks. We can put those in our eyes. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. So, <laughs> hi, everyone. Uh, glad you're here. Uh, wanted just, uh, I'm Eddie Bader, IMCP Americas. Um, our couple of uh, sessions that we have going on today uh, or next week is building a sustainable and stable business through partnering, right? P2P. So how do we do it? How do you take advantage of this high trust community? How do you take advantage of a building a business from the ground up or augmenting the business you already have? How do you connect with other partners? How do you how do you successfully manage uh, those waters? So we'll talk about best practices. We'll talk about success stories and we'll also just really um, talk about partnering in itself, right? So we we ask people to partner all the time, but we don't necessarily provide them with the skill set to do so. So we'll touch on that. And with that, we'll have some links to other uh, resources and activities that you could participate in and really understand how to take full advantage of this uh, larger ecosystem of partners that can augment your group and make you more successful. And then in our second uh, session that we're doing, uh, IAMCP VFI Roundtable on uh, d and Community Engagement and Advocacy. Really excited about this. So we're going to talk about um, advocacies, advocacy examples, you know, how to be an advocate. What does that really mean in the world today um, and, and moving forward? So how do you get involved in this conversation? How do you promote inclusion? We're going to have a wonderful uh, group of partners uh, that represent a bunch of different companies from different geographics. And I think we're really just going to talk about their experiences, their stories, how they got to where they were today, and how they're helping other people, uh, you know, share in this experience, share in this industry, and share in the success that they've been able to have themselves. So I invite you to join us for that. It's going to be a great session. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nicole Affect from Microsoft. She's the Global Partner Marketing Lead for Tech for Social Impact. Thank you so much, Eddie, and thank you again for having me on this call. Um, so I really just wanted to echo um, what Frank said before. Uh, we're, we really are in an unprecedented moment uh, in history, modern history right now, um, and nonprofit organizations are playing such a critical role in helping to address those economic and equity challenges. that are just so prevalent in our communities around the world today. Um, and if you look specifically at the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, it's affected the capacity and the sustainability of every nonprofit. And that's from education to environment to affordable housing, mental health services, animal welfare to the arts. I mean, there's there's just no organization that's going to emerge unscathed. Um, so the challenges that nonprofits have been facing um, have never been greater. Um, and at the same time, and never before has their work been more critical. Um, and that's really what I focus on. So I'm in the Tech for Social Impact team at Microsoft, um, and we're all about serving nonprofits and helping empower them through technology to achieve more. Um, so um, I really think that we're at um, an inflection point right now, and we need to stop and, and take a moment and ask ourselves, how can we get, how can we get involved more? And as technology leaders, um, I really believe that we all have a responsibility to enable all organizations to be more productive, more secure, more innovative. Um, and um, so I'm really excited for these sessions specifically at Inspire uh, because this year Microsoft is increasing our commitment um, to delivering technology and services to the nonprofit sector um, so that cr critical organizations like this can digitally transform and they can drive their missions forward. Um, so the first session that's up on the screen here um, um, is um, we're very excited. This is going to be a live session hosted by Jean-Philippe Coutois, who's the EVP of sales um, and our Tech for Social Impact GM, Justin Spellhawk. They're going to go deep into the partner opportunity for developing sector specific solutions. Um, and that's really about how you can come along and join Microsoft in our journey to help accelerate social impact through technology. Um, so that's session IDB 136. Um, and there's three different times listed there. Um, I just want to, to make a note. There's going to be live Q&A at each of those three sessions. So if you aren't able to join the live session, which is um, 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, which is 6 a.m. Pacific and uh, 2 p.m. 
uh, sorry, that's uh, 3 p.m. Central. A lot of confusing time zones there. Um, but there'll be live Q&A for every single one of those. So please come join those sessions and bring your questions if you need to. Um, and then the second session that we have um, is really a deep dive uh, into kind of the inner workings, that the how of building a cloud practice for resellers. Um, so that's Erin Birchfield and Ian Drew, who are on our Tech for Social Impact team. Uh, they're going to walk through actionable steps to develop and grow a nonprofit practice. So even if you don't have a nonprofit practice, that's absolutely the first place to start. Um, and they'll go through all the programs and the incentives and the resources and the um, marketing um, and sales plays that we have coming um, just to help everybody be successful um, in uh, advancing into that sector. And then the third session that we have is an Ask the Expert session. That's really more like an office hours style session um, where um, it's an open Q&A. We're going to be focusing on the ISV community and we'll be available to answer any questions around how to leverage the Dynamics Nonprofit Accelerator, how to build on the common data model. Um, so really, if you're building on, um, you're developing biz app solutions already for other verticals, this is the key session to come um, and learn how you can leverage those solutions and expand your expertise in the sector. Um, so again, thank you so much. I'm going to stay on if there's any questions. Um, I appreciate the time and we'd love to see you inspire. Great. Uh, thanks, Nicole. Uh, so now I'm going to switch over to invite our two partner communities um, speak to the sessions they're going to be hosting. So I'd like to introduce uh, Patty Cataldi, who is from the WIT Network. Uh, she's also the East Coast Regional Lead and the New York uh, City Chapter Chair. So Patty. If you want to take the floor, that would be great. Sure, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Thanks to the IMCP for uh, inviting us to enjoy this um, Know Before You Go. I think it's awesome to give everybody an idea of what's coming and so you don't miss anything. Three years ago, I attended um, Microsoft Inspire and I attended a WIT network event. And I was so impressed and I got, my, I got so involved and I've been involved ever since, but it really made such an impact on me. So I just want to share a little bit about the WIT Network and then the few sessions that we're going to do this year. The WIT Network is a global organization. We are present in 40 countries with local chapters, and then we have a little over 3,000 members internationally. And the chapters work uh, together with the global organization with the goal of inspiring, educating, mentoring, networking, providing practical, practical advice, um, really to empower women and their male allies uh, who, who are helping women to progress themselves, to build and grow their technical careers and pursue their ambitions, so have, the, the, have the empower them to pursue their ambitions. This year at Inspire, um, we're doing things a little bit differently, of course, because it's virtual, but each of these sessions is being delivered by one of the founders of the WIT Network. So um, Julie Simpson is a CEO of an organization run out of the UK. She's going to be delivering Promoting Your Inner Winners. If anyone is familiar with Julie, she has got a, she has a gusto. So she, each of these sessions is 30 minutes and it'll be well worth your time. She's going to share a lot of information. The second session is why diversity and inclusion is good for business by, from Corrine Sharp. She's also one of the founders of the WIT Network, also uh, president of her own organization. And the third session, Pathfinders, Women Lighting the Way Through Crisis, will be led by Christine Bongard, uh, also one of the founders of the WIT Network. And she's going to be sharing stories um, of women who are leading corporate transformation during this time of crisis. The last um, on, on the slide, it's it's not really a session. It's more, it's, it's interactive. We've done it in person for years. It's mentoring circles, and it's one of my favorite activities that we do in Inspire because you have uh, conversations with others, and it's a safe place to have open dialogue about uh, things that are happening, uh, topics and leading through crisis. Um, these sessions are at all different times with all different leaders, so and you can find it through searching for leadership in action, but there's several sessions you can sign up for. And that's what we have going this year at Inspire, and I hope to see you guys at all of the events. Thank you. <laughs> Great, Patty. Um, yeah, and I do know those mentoring circles are extremely popular, so I think the sooner you sign up for those, the better. And now what I'd like to do is switch over to 
uh, Chaitra uh, from Vedapali from Women in Cloud. So Chaitra, if you wouldn't mind introducing the Women in Cloud organization, and um, then when you're done, you can hand it back to me and we'll do a walk through the website. Perfect. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, thank you to the IMCP for inviting Women in Cloud to be part of the Know Before You Go. Uh, I'm Chaitra Vedala Pali. I hold uh, two roles. One is I run my company called Mela. We are a cloud solution provider. And then I also am a president and co-founder of Women in Cloud. And Women in Cloud was really designed with the intention to create a billion dollars in economic access for women entrepreneurs to win enterprise contracts and closely work with enterprises, corporation, as well as work with the policymakers to make uh, systematic changes that is stopping them for accessing enterprise contracts. As part of the community, we focus on three things. One is a community, which is a thriving community, which focuses on helping women entrepreneurs to be successful in the uh, in the tech channel. It's very important for making sure women can thrive. They can build inclusive solutions uh, that is needed. The second one is we also have is a Microsoft Cloud Accelerator which allows women to build solutions and also be ready for co-sell opportunities with Microsoft in the enterprise market. And the third area we focus on is in the um, uh, building is the public-private partnership and also ensuring we are removing all the policy challenges that stops women from getting access to opportunity. So this year, we are really excited uh, to joining hands with IMCP and collectively Women in Cloud has created a hundred million women reach across the world, which focuses on economic development. The two important sessions that we are focused on is the five laws of cloud solution building with Microsoft Cloud and with really the secrets to providing how to build that million dollar cloud business and what are the laws you have to implement to be successful. And plus you will hear from all the five uh, entrepreneurs who are coming and talking about how they use these laws for building their business as well as solution. Uh, this is happening on Wednesday uh, on the July 22nd, so we would love you to join with us and it's a power session. It's a 30 minute session. The second session that we are doing, which is around you plus Microsoft is how to develop a better together story. We all talk about partnership, but how do you do a partnership that works because it's more of a science than art? So then you have to really understand how to understand those two together. We have uh, Christine Puccio, she is the VP at F5, who's going to join us uh, or join me in that session where we'll talk about the secrets of how to really to put together your better together story, how to write your um, uh, uh, plans with Microsoft and how to access those programs that will help you accelerate lead generation and also understand how to be part of the Microsoft Cloud Accelerator. So that's another one, but it is really an intermediate. You really have to be a Microsoft partner to be part of this session. The third session is, uh, which is really focused on is the partner uh, uh, conversations and how to rock your webinars and digital events, especially with really going live. How do you go about it? And it's a very intimate conversation and Ducks and I, we will be facilitating those sessions. So my call to action for all of you today is uh, we as a woman in cloud represent as a delegation. We go believe in going there and having as a tribe learn from each other, connect from each other. So uh, inviting all of you to join our delegation where you can have access to an online community to meet all the members. Second, you also have the perks from getting connected to the people who are experts. There's a curated list of sessions that you can do, which the community is recommending. You also have your badge and social medias to promote, so you don't have to do it all by yourself. And you also have is a brand recognition in the market. And also we'll have is a happy hour to close that on uh, July 23rd, so you can join us and have an intimate conversation and really focus on business building with each other. So I really would love uh, to invite all of you to join our delegation and be with us and learn together. Thank you. Great, thanks Chaitra. And I was happy to be part of your January event and I, I must say walked away from that very energized. So 
uh, thank you for your time. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is just um, give everybody a walk through the website because as you can imagine, um, I can imagine there are a lot of questions. I know when we started working through this, um, it, it was truly amazing what Microsoft and the communities had built in the short amount of time we, we've had. So uh, once you've registered for the event, one of the first things that you should do is um, complete your profile. So um, this one is just my example. Um, you have your attendee profile, a little bit about you and your social media properties, uh, what you do from a company perspective, and then importantly, how you would like to be contacted. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about contact preferences because being a global event, um, we need to be very aware of the code of conduct. So we're dealing with uh, partners across the globe. We have GDPR issues we need to be aware of. Um, and so just make sure you've all read the code of conduct and we are respectful in terms of behavior, messaging, uh, sales pitches, etc. in this forum. And all um, session leaders uh, will be um, moderated by Microsoft and they have the ability, if need be, to dismiss people from the meeting and uh, you will not be allowed back into other meetings. So make sure that um, you take a look at the code of conduct. If you've not already built your schedule um, or your schedule, depending on which, uh, which geography you're in and how you say that word, um, the session scheduler will really outline all of the sessions you have and it's it's pretty amazing that we've been able to put we Microsoft have been able to put on uh, 508 sessions um, they're not all unique as mentioned some will be live and others will be live and recorded uh, but you can pretty much go day by day and add sessions to your calendar but probably the easiest way to navigate all these sessions is to go to the connection zone so I'm going to talk a little bit about what the connection zone is. Uh, let me just wait for it to come up. OK, so attendee networking. So this is where you can foster, foster those P2P and partner to Microsoft connections. And this is going to this is where your pro, your profile becomes extremely important. So you're able in this networking session to identify other partners or Microsoft employees with whom you would like to connect. Um, if you set up a meeting, uh, what will happen is it's going to show up on my meetings and these are going to be Teams meetings. So these will be um, generated by Microsoft. You'll be able to utilize Teams with a group of partners or with the Microsoft employee that um, has accepted your meeting request. Um, so that's where you get to connect with um, Microsoft and other partners. Uh, we Microsoft realizes that the one of the huge benefits of Inspire for most of us is this ability to connect with each other. Um, and because we're in this unique situation, that's going to be extremely difficult. So to the extent we can do that digitally, um, really utilizing that attendee directory is probably the way to go. Um, the, the Ask the Expert sessions. So there are a few details around these sessions that you need to know. Um, and it's it's really predicated on the difference between Teams live event, which almost is limitless in terms of the number of attendees, and Teams meetings, which are limited. So those are the two delineators. Um, with the Ask the Expert, so in these sessions, um, this is where you get to ask the product questions, the what happened to, what's coming, roadmap type questions um, of Microsoft. So there will be a, just a couple of introduction slides. This is not a PowerPoint session. This is a moderated Q&A session. So there is no presentation. Uh, Microsoft will be accepting questions through the Q&A panel and answering them for all um, partners and uh, there are some uh, vendor sessions in here as well, but that's where you get to ask those questions you've been dying to ask for a very long time. Um, 
you will see these are saying some are limited space and um, the limitation is 3000 attendees per session. So um, that's a little bit about ask the experts. The partner sessions, this is where all the P2P takes place. So there are 25 different topics. So these will run three times and they will be live. Uh, Microsoft employees are not able to join these sessions. So this is strictly partner to partner. Um, and the idea is each of these sessions will have a moderator and it's designed to foster the P2P dialogue. Uh, some of the sessions, as you can see, are filling up, but if you just scroll through the bottom here, you might find the same session repeated and there is availability. So as soon as we're done with this call, I encourage you to go into the partner sessions. If there are topics there that you are really passionate about, RSVP as soon as you can. Um, there is an ability, and I'll cover that in a little bit, post Inspire for um, partner organizations like ourselves, the WIT Network and the Women in Cloud and VFI to do follow on sessions after Inspire if some of these uh, topics are just extremely popular and warrant um, further meetings. Um, the community sessions. So this is where you'll find most of our sessions, IAMCP, WIT and WIC. Um, so with these, these are all teams live event. Um, there's really, we can have 10,000 plus attendees, even though it says limited space. Um, there is almost, you know, if we, I think we had something like um, 42,000 people registered. So there's more than likely you're going to be able to register for most of the sessions you want to attend. Um, so the sooner you can do those, the better. Um, and if you're really just tired of sitting at your desk, like I know that I am every single day, you can watch people paint, you can take a break and do some yoga. Um, so these sessions will be running the entire time during Inspire if you just need to take that little break. Um, I will cover the uh, schedule in a little bit so you can see when the breaks are. But before I move over to that, I want to talk about the local connection sessions. So these are all geographic specific sessions. Uh, sessions. So depending on which part of the world you're in, um, you are able to RSVP for the session that applies to your geographic location. Um, if I take a look at the my event schedule, um, this is where it tells me where I have gaps and Microsoft have designed the agenda specifically to allow all of us to take a break between sessions, but if we need to take a client call or do some work um, in between, we have the ability to do that. So um, sessions will be 30 minutes long. They will be not. They will. They will not be longer than 30 minutes. Out, uh, aside from the the keynotes, um, all the other sessions are 30 minutes. Um, you'll see they either start at the bottom of the hour, ending at the top, or they starting at quarter past and ending. Um, I, so in this particular part of the website, this is where you get to see everything that you have signed up for. Um, you have a couple of ways to look at it, a daily view. Um, you'll also, depending on what you have signed up for, you'll be able to see when the pre-recorded sessions are and I don't have anything in mind at this point. Uh, before I switch back to the PowerPoint, what I want to call your attention to is all of the communities on this call today have um, a presence on the Microsoft Partner Community. Post Inspire, this is where we will be de uh, delivering a lot more additional programming. It's also an opportunity for you as partners to go into these various um, partner communities to either join them and connect with other partners in your geography, or if you're looking to you know, expand your business into Denmark or Germany from India, Australia, the US, then this is a place you can go to meet partners who operate in those geographies. So I encourage you all to um, explore the partner community after Inspire. Um, and so I have one concluding slide, and then we will switch over to Q&A. Um, so 
your next steps. Um, if you haven't already signed up, get signed up today um, and make sure you complete your profile. So if you're very interested in that P2P connection, um, as we all know, when we go on LinkedIn and other social properties, if you just have your avatar up there, it's really, um, for me, it's a non-starter. I like to see who I'm having a conversation with. So I encourage you to complete your profile. Uh, make sure you have read through the code of conduct and then create your schedule. The, the one thing I never showed you that I will show you now on the Inspire website, um, there is some digital swag. So obviously this year we will not be getting our lovely swag bag, but if you click on this, you'll get a zip file and the zip file has um, banners for LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, whatever social media account you have, but it also has some great teams backgrounds, uh, much like the one uh, Nicole was using for her side of the presentation. So you can use all of those digital elements in your marketing and to promote your attendance to inspire. Um, just a reminder, next week on Monday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, uh, we'll have Sergio, um, and myself on the Welcome to Inspire with IMCP call. And then the wrap up next week on Friday, if you want to hear from your regional leaders as to what your the takeaways for your geographies should be. And so with the conclusion of this portion of the presentation, I'd like to open up the floor for Q&A, um, Sandy. And do I need to take my PowerPoint off of display? Um, you can leave it up. That gives everybody their action items that they need to do. Um, we can go through any of the questions that came in. We have been answering questions as they've been coming in, so please make sure you check the Q&A panel for any of the questions that have come in that we've already answered. That way, um, you're, if you did have the same question, the answer is there. A couple have come in um, in addition to that, and if you do have any additional questions, please put them in um, the Q&A panel now, and we'll go through all of those. Um, there was a question on um, from Christian. How can I find a, attendees with specific interest competencies to engage in conversations, i.e. looking for Azure Stack specialists? Is there a way, Cheryl, or maybe Nicole knows, is there a way that you can filter attendee information to find specific attendees based on competencies? I'm not sure. I don't believe so. And um, it's going to depend on how well those attendees are profiling themselves. Um, unfortunately, I think we probably have to hunt and pick through the list to try to find who they may be because it doesn't give a description down below as to what competencies are. All right, uh, let's see. There was a, a question about WIT. Um, Patty, um, is there a WIT happy hour or other event this year as well? And, and I'm guessing that's that's a that's a no, as it's a virtual event. Is that that correct? You guys don't have any sort of. Yes, that's a no. We don't have a happy hour this year. Right. We'll still be happy, but not. I know. Happy. We're all going to be happy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, let's see. Is there some way we can consistently mark our profiles to allow IMCP members to recognize each other and search and connect with each other during Inspire? And I don't think we had that ability, did we? No, Cheryl? we don't have that ability, unfortunately. Unfortunately. All right. Um, let's see. I don't so, see. Hi, sorry, it's Nicole. Just, just on that, if you do put IAMCP in your profile, in that search that you have up there, you could type IAMCP and still see people who have tagged themselves. It's not a tag, but you can still get a list of people who've added that in their profile. So to answer the question before about Azure, that's probably the best way if you were looking for anybody who had Azure in their title or in their interests, it would show up in the listing. Excellent it's, tip. It's all going to depend on how people are filling out their profile then. Yeah. So maybe yeah, we exactly. can make that a best practice for IAMCP members to at least put yeah. that in yeah. there. Yeah, and I think for everybody in the, on this call, if you're looking for something specific, uh, start with your own pro profile so you at least can be found. Now I'm curious, when you did a search on IAMCP, it looked like Satya came up too. That's awesome. <laughs> if you scroll down a little bit. 
Oh, or maybe I was supposed to look alike, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Oh, I love that. I, I need glasses. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Eddie and um, Cheryl, uh, I think both of you might be able to answer this question for uh, the audience here. Are there, are there any of the IMCP small sessions scheduled this year that have been held in the past with the Microsoft executives? I think they're referring to our roundtables. Uh, no, we don't have separate roundtables um, this year. What we have been doing is uh, certain chapters have been doing small um, exec sessions, but uh, going forward after Inspire, what we're trying to do and are planning to do are quarterly uh, business briefings, partner briefings, and we can start to include those um, exec roundtables on um, in that, but we're still in the throes of planning that, anticipating we might um, hopefully we'll kick something off in September. Great. Um, let's see. I see you have a digital badge from the digital swag. That one is more novelty, or is there a recommended way to use the digital badge for the social media graphics? Do we just use those as our cover photos and as graphic when we post statements? Um, so this this is part of the swag bag. Um, how I've seen the Inspire banner used is um, people who are um, speaking have used the banner on LinkedIn and brought attention to their session. I've also seen a lot of partners use those ba um, the banners on LinkedIn say, I'm going, are you? Um, we do have a couple of hashtags you do need to think about when using those and I encourage you all to use them on your company pages, on your personal pages. It's um, hashtag MS Inspire, hashtag MS Partner because Microsoft will be following and promoting those. Um, so I encourage you to use all of them. I would show the folder um, of this probably 30 or 40 different ones and different themes. Um, it just looks yeah, my uh, desktop is a little bit of a mess. Otherwise, I would show it. <laughs> um, I see a couple of uh, questions have come in with uh, issues logging into my Inspire part of the site and then somebody not being able to access the attendees. Obviously, there might be a few problems happening with the website this morning. Uh, hopefully, you can go back in later at some point. Um, and and those... what, yeah, and what we did find last week, so Sandy and I were having a very similar issue. Um, it's... Uh, so I had logged in with my Office 365 account and I couldn't get back in. Um, so you might want to look at it in a number of different ways. So um, there's uh, the attendee login. I think there's a, there was a Microsoft option. There was your business account. There's a Microsoft employee option. I think there was one other. Um, so I chose the my business account, I think, and then I was able to get into the website. So you might have to try a couple of options there. Yeah, yes, if you have you. multiple, yeah, if you have multiple credentials, uh, make sure that when you go to log into the website that you use the credentials that you registered for Inspire with. That's the key. Make sure you use those um, those credentials. LinkedIn was the other option. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, I don't see uh, any other questions. Um, we'll just give it a few moments because um, there is a bit of a delay with these questions coming through, but I think we we may be complete here. I don't see anything new. Hey, it's Nicole here. Sorry to jump in. I just I need to do the really annoying Microsoft uh, like check check off. There is um, under the event information drop down at the top. There is a code of conduct. I do have to remind everybody, please, to just read it. <laughs> um, I trust that everyone in IANCP is wonderful and you all know um, kind of how to how to conduct yourself in online events, but there's just a little bit of guidance there that I just wanted to draw attention to. No problem. Um, and then the, another thing I do want to tell everybody about is even though the event is next week, uh, keep an eye on the website because every day things are being added. So um, items I may have spoken about today, there might be new items tomorrow, but pretty much I think by end of the week, it's locked loaded and it's kickoff next week. So. 
right. Uh, let's see, do I have something? Um, what are some of you most looking forward to in the non-IMCP sessions? Well, I guess that's, just, that's for everybody. Yeah, go yeah, ahead, Eddie. I'll just jump in. Um, you know, what we're doing, you know, for for our company uh, is built around security um, and uh, work from anywhere. So I'm really looking forward to the roadmap for Teams, understanding what's coming out, what's going to be able to be connected through Teams, and uh, any enhancements they're making on the security roadmap to uh, create uh, additional features um, to secure the work from home experience or work from anywhere experience. But it's always kind of, you know, the look forward is always is really cool, I think. Um, and then secondarily, which is probably not second, it's probably first for me, is really getting to know um, more details around uh, the skilling initiative that Microsoft has uh, has presented. You know, they announced last a uh, couple of weeks ago and all the, um, you know, inclusion efforts and their pledge in terms of to the community and society on, on what they're doing in terms of, uh, you know, being more inclusive as a company, but requiring, you know, having certain things in place for supplier diversity and, and really trying to make a, a social impact and, and kind of work on the social inequities, not in, only in this country, but across the globe. So that's of high interest to me as well. Uh, yeah, and I'll speak up too. So I am in partner marketing and um, in going through this schedule, I'm always looking for marketing sessions. And I think especially now um, that we're all, um, you know, most marketing has shifted to mainly digital. I'll be looking at some of those sessions and seeing where partners are having success um, and the types of uh, things that they're struggling with. So uh, that's what I'm looking for. So Cheryl, um, this is Chaitra again. <clears throat> so the, the kind of things that we are looking is we are looking to spot experts in the market who can help us find answers to the challenges that we face around economic recovery and trying to build uh, solutions that can drive inclusiveness. For example, we are looking for AI experts who know how to remove biases in scenarios that we build solutions for so that when we put in these solutions in the market, it's very inclusive. The second area we look for is the, the trend of where the market is moving and shifting because we have to really dial in into what the leaders are talking about and ensuring that where is the direction, where is the ship moving and making sure that your business is aligned where the ship is moving, especially the big hyperscalers like Microsoft mm -hmm. who are actually changing the trajectory of a lot of the digital transformation that's going to happen. So you kind of have to align to that. And third is looking for strategic partnerships for companies who are focused on uh, economic development, rem bringing uh, access to masses so that post COVID or during COVID and post COVID after pandemic, uh, we are all in a new world and the new world is digitally transformed and everybody has access to opportunities uh, at a scale that we couldn't do it today. So those are kind of the areas we are looking, but mostly we want to work as a community and uh, work and collaborate with each other to create mutual partnerships and opportunity because uh, with COVID, a lot of the businesses are losing opportunities today. So we want to make sure everything is treasured for them. Awesome. Thank you, Chaitra. Thank you. All right. I don't see any other questions. So Cheryl, would you like to wrap things up? Yeah, well, I just uh, want to say thank you to everybody for attending today and um, I think the unique experience um, next week will be beneficial for all of us. There might be things that we'll miss, you know, hugging our buddy from across the world. Um, but I look forward to seeing, as best we can, seeing you next week um, at Inspire. So thank you for your time. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We're going to end our presentation now. We look forward to seeing you on our future event. And everybody have a great time at Inspire. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.